So I think Dead Space is probably one of my all-time favorite game series, but with that being said, I haven't actually played it in a very long time. I think that, like a lot of other people, I just kind of forgot about it because they haven't made a Dead Space game in 10 years, but that's changing since they're remaking the first one and it's coming out in a couple weeks at the time of recording. And so before the remake comes out, I thought I would take the time to go back and look at the original game. And you know what? For a game that's 15 years old, this holds up pretty freaking well. For the longest time in my head, Dead Space was just a sci-fi Resident Evil 4, and I think there's some truth to that, but at the same time, it combines so many different elements. You know, it's Resident Evil, and it's Silent Hill, and it's Alien, and it's just its own thing. It's so unique as a series. And so what happens whenever you combine all these things is you get something that's really special and really cool, because it's able to take all the best elements from those series and is able to do something entirely new with them. So to give you a quick summary of the game, Dead Space is about an engineer named Isaac Clarke, who is a space engineer because it's the future. <laughs> and he and his team are going on a mission to repair this giant spaceship that his girlfriend is on. In fact, he volunteered for the mission specifically because his girlfriend is on the ship. But of course, whenever you get there, you realize that, you know, everyone's dead and the ship has been overrun by essentially space zombies, but they're so much grosser than that. But I'll get into that in a bit. So since you're an engineer, you basically have to do a bunch of engineering related tasks to get the ship up and running again, all the while you're fighting space zombies. It sounds like a very simple premise and it is. I think, but it's brilliant in its simplicity because ultimately this is one of the most intense experiences as a gamer I think you can have. Really, everything about this game is designed to up the intensity of it and to make you feel scared, basically. It is a horror game after all. I consider this to be more of an action horror, and if you're wondering what do I consider Resident Evil 4, I consider it an action horror as well. I don't see it as the same thing as some of the classic Resident Evil games like the Resident Evil remake for instance, but that doesn't mean it's bad. It just means it's a different beast with different rules. Like I said, this game is super intense and there's a lot of reasons for it. First off, I think that the sound design in this game is absolutely brilliant. There are all these sounds that you wouldn't hear unless you're wearing headphones, and I think that just makes the experience that much more crazy. So to give you an example, there's a lot of heartbeat sounds. And what I mean by that is when you're in action and when you're fighting these necromorphs, you literally hear Isaac's heart pounding in your ear. In addition to that, there's a lot of orchestral sounds. So for instance, it seems like anytime there's a necromorph that pops up, you just hear a orchestra play. You hear a, a shrill note. And I think it was actually a really good choice to go with an orchestra because it's kind of classy. I mean, this is the future, so they could have gone with any style of music that they wanted, but I don't think anything would have worked as well as the orchestra. You know, anytime you see like a sci-fi thing, it seems like they're playing some kind of like industrial dance music. And the thought of that being in Dead Space is kind of hilarious. In addition to that, there's a lot of creepy whisperings that you hear just throughout the game. Oftentimes you'll hear them whenever you're just completely alone in an area. And so even when there's nothing happening and you're not fighting anyone or you're not solving puzzles, you still hear the whispers and you still are kind of spooked. One of the best things that contributes to the intensity of the game is the aggression of the enemies. All of the necromorphs are super fast and they jump all over the place and they're just crazy aggressive. These definitely aren't the slow-paced zombies that you'll see in something like Resident Evil, but they're probably closer to the running zombies that you would see in something like Left 4 Dead. So the necromorphs are super fast, but you yourself, Isaac Clark, the player character, um, you're kind of slow. I think you control a lot more smoothly than Leon in Resident Evil 4, for instance, but still you feel kind of clunky. You definitely feel like you're wearing a heavy spacesuit. I called this game an experience earlier, and I stand by that, because it doesn't feel like just another shooting game. It's something that requires basically all of your attention. I can't imagine that it would be a good idea to try to multitask and listen to podcasts while you're playing this game. You probably wouldn't retain anything. So this game is pretty gross. The box art features a severed arm, which is pretty nasty but really makes for a striking image. This game revels in gore and shows how many ways a human body can be destroyed, twisted, and rebuilt into something alien. This game is really dark and it goes places that other games are scared to go. Basically the best example of this I can think of is the fact that there are baby necromorphs, as in human babies who have been transformed into necromorph zombies. Because you never see that in a zombie show. You never see like children being turned into zombies because that's really screwed up. But Dead Space basically works off of the logic that if there was a zombie outbreak, then everyone would be at risk. Dead Space is a dark game, and I think that's a large part of it, is just the fact that no one is escaping the outbreak. Like I mentioned, Dead Space is a really gory game, and I think that's where a lot of the horror of it comes from, is just seeing human bodies twisted and manipulated. But I think there are some really cool psychological elements at play. In fact, I always forget about the psychological elements because they're very understated, but they are there. Dead Space isn't a psychological horror in the same way that Silent Hill is, but it definitely takes influence from it. Essentially, there is an alien artifact called the Marker, which is the cause 
cause of the necromorph outbreak and it causes people to hallucinate and essentially causes space dementia which is a muse song <laughs> the hallucinations in the game are a super interesting element of it because you run into a lot of characters who are obviously crazy and hallucinating and seeing things that aren't actually there but then at some point you realize that you are too i think one of the most brilliant things about this game and this game series is that you have to kill the enemies by severing their limbs body shots don't work headshots don't work and so you have to shoot the arms and legs of the creatures in order to kill them like i said the enemies in this game are super aggressive and so they're swinging their arms and legs back and forth making it kind of difficult to hit them it's much easier to get a headshot but like i said that doesn't do anything to them dead space is a really linear game you know there isn't much to explore and it's not as easy to get lost in here as it is in a classic survival horror game but this is a game that does backtracking really well backtracking for those unaware is just whenever you go back to an area that you've already been through before and backtracking is a pretty common thing it can be done poorly like in devil may cry 4 for instance where you go through the areas that you've been through again but nothing has really changed but i'm happy to say that this game does backtracking really well because because you go back to an area and it's completely different than what it was before. One of my favorite things about this game is all the influence it takes from the work of HP Lovecraft. Lovecraft, for those unaware, is the guy who created Cthulhu, which you've probably seen before. One of the core themes of Lovecraft's work is the idea that humans are basically nothing and are just small and insignificant in the universe, and that there are things bigger and greater than us that simply don't care about us, and that I think carries over really well into this game. Isaac Clarke is one man, and he's having to face off against all these forces that are much much greater than him. He has to struggle against people in the government and against the Church of Unitology. In some cases, he's literally fighting forces much greater than himself, as in much bigger. There are some really cool and crazy monster battles in this game, and in some cases it feels like you're fighting kaiju or something. One of the things I love about this game's story is the fact that Isaac Clarke didn't have to come on this mission, but he volunteered, like I said, because his girlfriend was on the ship. But pretty early on, the ship that he used to come here with his crew gets blown up, and so from then on he has no choice but to fight and endure the horror. I think that's a really good storytelling tactic, honestly, that you just put a character back up against the wall and force them to go through something horrible. Because he could choose to sit down and die at any point, but he doesn't. Almost the entire game takes place in a single ship, and so it feels like you really come to know the ship by the end of it. I think it's a lot like the castle from Devil May Cry 1, or the mansion from Resident Evil 1 in that regard. It comes to be the only place that you know from your hours playing the game. The USG Ishimura, which is the ship that the game takes place on, is really well thought out, and you can definitely tell that they put a lot of thought and effort into designing it and making it functional. This is a ship that was built with cafeterias and nurseries and bathrooms in mind. And so even though everything on the ship is dead, it feels lively in a weird way, because you can tell that this place was lived in. There are a couple sections of the game that I don't like, which are mostly the turret sections. Everyone has problems with them, and I hope that they cut them out of the remake. And I wanted to bring up the remake before I go. While I was playing this game from 2008, the one thing in my mind was, does this game need a remake? And honestly, I would say not really. The game is still really fun and enjoyable, and it's super polished, especially considering it came out 15 years ago. But with that said, I certainly think that there are things that could change. For instance, your stasis and TK beam in this aren't very good. That's something that Dead Space 2 fixed though, is it made both of those things better and more useful in combat. So whenever I think of games that need remakes, this isn't the first one that comes to mind. But with that being said, I'm still excited to see how they expand on it. I love this first Dead Space game and I love the trilogy as a whole, but I'm not blind to the faults of this game. I don't think this game has many faults and like I've said, I don't really think it needs a remake, but honestly, I'm gonna play the remake anyway with an open mind. And if the remake is able to revive the series and bring it back from the dead i will be forever grateful because again the series is very near and dear to my heart i think this is a really special series and i think this is a really special game so to sum up dead space is awesome i love it it's worth playing and thank you for watching